basically filming the stink from Tropical Cyclone 10. And, or the, the facts of it. And uh, you would not believe, even though it's cool outside, it's in the 60s, it feels like a nor'easter, like a, almost like a, a winter storm or like a nor'easter might get like in October, November, which, you know, with a cold core storm. This system, you know where it originated from, even though it's not named, they only called it a, a PTC or Potential Tropical Cyclone and gave it, you know, number 10, Potential Tropical Cyclone 10. This system, drum roll please, da -da 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 -da, originated off the coast of Africa about four weeks ago. Yep, or three and a half weeks ago. I noticed uh, around the 15th of uh, August, I noticed a video, today's the 29th, so 14 days. It rolled off of Africa, actually not, fifth, not, not three weeks ago, Two and a half weeks ago is when it rolled off the coast of Africa. It rolled off the coast of Africa around August 11th, actually. No, the, yeah, the, about the third, 12th, 13th, it rolled off the coast. But it wasn't given any chance of development until, like, all the way until, like, the 16th. But on the night, on the night of the 15th is when I made the video after I noticed the swirl on the satellite. I'm like, oh, look at that little feature. I kind of pointed out in the video. I'm going to po post the description to the link. That is Invest 92L. Invest 9, it became Invest 92L, I believe, the end of the next day. Invest 92L, actually, no, it became Invest 92L. Actually, I believe, surprisingly, on the 17th, it actually became Invest, uh, the 16th, it became Invest 92L. The same day I left to uh, Orlando, it became, finally got, got an Invest. Um, actually, the video was posted on the 15th. Actually, no, I made it the night of the, uh, the, the, on the night of the 14th, around midnight. That's why it said 15th. Yeah. So it was the, uh, the f yeah, it was pa a little past midnight when I made the video. So that's why I said 14th. So it was actually the night of the 14th going to the 15th when I made the video. Sorry, I just had to correct myself a little bit. Um, so with that in mind, it has been actually 15 days since I made that video. It was 14th going into the 15th. Um, so, I, because I remember I went into work that day and I called the National Hurricane Center to ask him about the system that I already dubbed Invest 92L. Or I wasn't sure that if that was if that too was part of the, the same system, but they told me it wasn't even. In, they told me not only was it not part of Invest 91L, as I thought I knew it wasn't. I just wanted to make sure, but it wasn't even given an invest. There was no air. As I made, when I made the video, there was no area of disturbed weather for it. There was no potential for it. The only thing that was out there at the time was, in that, was I believe, there was a tropical system in Atlanta. I forgot its name. I believe it was GERT. Was, there was GERT out there at the time. Yes, GERT was out there. So you had GERT. And then you had Invest 91L. Um, it wasn't even given a potential for development. Not even a, a product. No product was issued for it at all. And I called that to the Intention of National, weather, uh, National Hurricane Center. Uh, just, you know, I called their, uh, their number that's made for the general public, basically, in the media. Um, and they told me, just like a, just a moment ago, they issued a product for it. It was about six hours after I made the video. They probably were all on top of that system, contemplating whether to do it or not. Because the models were hinting on it, something forming, but then tearing it apart, like, two days later. So basically, they decided probably not to do it. But the GFS became a little bit bullish in that system, having it turn into a tropical storm, but then weakening it, and even having it go up north and out to sea. <laughs> not only did it not go out to sea, but it actually traversed the Atlantic, affected the Bahamas, giving them showery, squally weather, and then went into Florida and went briefly into the Gulf. And then that area of low pressure, you know, crossed into Florida, went into like uh, North Carolina, Georgia area, just around that area. And was given a potential tropical cyclone 10. So this is Invest 92L. This is what was that with that same system that I was keeping an eye on three was three weeks ago or 15 days ago. 15 days ago. This is the system I was talking about 15 days ago. Can you believe it? Huh. I mentioned it 15 days ago, and this system is now affecting me. Huh. How ironic is I mean that's how tropical systems work. They have so much warning with them. Usually Models only go out 15 days, the most. So it's like, I mean, I, I wasn't sure what was going to go. Some of the models had it going up the coast. Some of the models had it turn into a hurricane and quickly have it go up the coast, like by the 17th, 18th. 
or 19th, 20th. But because it meandered in the Gulf, it kind of lost about several days, and and it really didn't become anything much, and then Harvey kind of sheared it apart. Yeah, Harvey, What since Harvey became a Cat 4, which I did anticipate, but I kind of would, I kind of hyped it a little bit because of the conditions. I kind of said what it could do. And that's why I said it could become a Cat 5. I didn't say it will. But I said I wouldn't be surprised if it became a Cat 5. So I wasn't surprised that it became a Cat 4. But how quickly it went before landfall still astonished me. Not, I mean, I, was, I wasn't surprised that I was right. I knew it was going to happen. But I was shocked that none of the other models anticipated it. And it just happened so quickly. I thought it was going to happen sooner, but at the speed it happened right before landfall, that's what astonished me. My prediction did all along come true. And kind of the way I anticipated it. Uh, but anyway, back to Invest 91, 92L, which I thought was going to be named Irma. Apparently, there is another system out there which could be named Irma, which could spell trouble for the East Coast. All the, but... There is a tropical storm in the in the Pacific, Sanyu, which could be the deciding factor whether Irma goes into Florida or out to sea. How will that work? Or into the Northeast? There is a huge debate right now in in the models. What will Sanyu do? Will Sanyu bomb out in the Bering Sea as an extra power? I mean, near the near the Sea of Okhotsk, uh, Okhotsk, near the Sea of Okhotsk. And near Kamchatka, and cause a powerful ridge to develop over Alaska and the West Coast, and big trough to develop on the East Coast, which will send the storm out to sea, or will it not? Or will, or will it not do that? Or will the high pressure system kind of win out and ha and trap the system south, not let it tap the upper level low, and when the next system comes along, t tug it up the East Coast and bring a big mess of things up and down the East Coast, like Irene did. Yeah, that's what could happen. There's three possibilities. Out to sea, into Florida, and into the Gulf, almost like Andrew, or up the coast, like Irene. Those are the three possibilities right now. And Sanyu is the deciding player. There's two deciding players. Sanyu in that big area of high pressure. And of course, that, uh, that upper level low, that will basically that kind of polar vortex almost, because a big chunk of that polar area is going to get chopped down into the East Coast, it's going to cause a lot of cold air. You're probably going to have frost. They issued frost advisories in August. I mean, for the upper Midwest already. There's actually been a frost advisory in effect for, uh, I believe, Marquette. Yeah, they had sub-freezing temperatures. I think that might be a record low for the state. Sub-freezing temperatures in August. Can you believe that? And yeah, Tanja's going to say, you, uh, global warming skeptics and deniers are going to say, you see, global warming doesn't exist. Clap. But here's why it happened. The reasoning behind it. You know what the reasoning is? Da, 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 da. The Pacific is very warm. When you have a warmer than average Pacific, you have a big ridge over Alaska. When you have a big ridge over Alaska, you have a big trough on the East Coast. It's called the oscillations. When something goes up, it must come down. It's all in logic. And all the models do this. It's like, look, when you have a positive PNA, the AO is going to go down, become negative, which is going to send cold air into the East Coast. A negative AO means that Arctic air spreads outward, while a positive AO means Arctic air is trapped. It, you have a very strong polar vortex. So the polar vortex was mostly disorganized because of that ridge. So the cold air spilled into the country. And yes, you had that frost because of it. Not because the world temperature is cooling. Matter of fact, it's actually warming. And this actually happened because the Pacific is much warmer than normal. I don't know if this trend is going to continue because the Western Pacific is very warm as well, which it's completely different. The entire Northern Pacific Basin is very warm right now. There's one or two pockets of cool, but it's all basically warm. And if that trend continues, the winter pattern will be quite different. You will have a negative PNA potentially developed, and that could spell a surprisingly warm.